name's Lola Greeno. I'm an Aboriginal woman from Tasmania and I'm an artist, but arts, um, craft, I guess cultural maker in um, shell jewellery and um, of recent, I guess, you know, um, my shell jewellery has expanded into other cultural materials. I started making jewellery um, in the late 80s, so probably my, you know, late 40s, close to being 50 really, being very serious about uh, making. And, and that was more prompted by thinking about, um, you know, people had kept asking me. At that time I was doing my associate diploma in fine arts and everyone was asking where I came from and what it was like um, living on the island. And so you had to sort of set the picture really for people who'd never been there and didn't really, a lot of people didn't know much about um, shell necklace making in those days. Um, so I thought, oh my gosh, I should really do some work with my mother, you know, while she's still around. And that really prompted her and I doing some work together, which I'm so proud that that, that happened really as probably one, my number one mentor in, in the late 80s, early 90s. We did quite some work together. <music> I was born on Cape Barren Island, which is in the Ferno Group um, off the northeast coast of Tasmania. Um, but it's a small island between the northeast of Tasmania and Flinders Island. So, if you, um, so it was a ma quite a well-known um, island for an Aboriginal community uh, where I walked to school in those days, which was very enjoyable and lived just a short distance to the beach, which was really part of our program our playground I suppose in a sense and and all of that instilled you know work walking on the beach with elders on a Sunday um, was probably the beginning as a young child running along the beach picking up shells and probably handing to mum at that age not necessarily making as such but enjoying the whole experience of it um, and so there that, that's the lovely memories of, of the beginning of um, using shells to make a necklace, I think. When I first started making, I was very um, strict about using the shells and making them a certain length because we, we were carrying on the legacy of our earlier makers like uh, Truganini and Fanny Cochran Smith. And so it was very important to, to look at those old um, necklaces and that's how they were worn, you know, as part of the body adornment um, and very strong leaders in the community. And I remember early on thinking, no, I won't make sure bracelets even because I thought it was so contemporary, it was so far away from, you know, how they were first made. But now I've moved on from that as times have changed. Blue Mariner shell necklace that um, you've got in the Powerhouse um, Museum collection was made in the early 90s. Um, that was when I was becoming very serious about <laughs> making and where my necklaces went. I, I wasn't making a lot, but I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you've got a, a, a lovely Blue Mariner one in the collection, um, plus a, a toothy one, um, because you'll never, never see me make another long toothy one again, because the shells are so scarce. Um, but with, with the blue mariner one you've got in the collection, I would suggest all of those shells either came from Flinders or from Cape Brown. In those days, I still went back to Cape Brown a little bit. Um, and I would have only collected mariner shells on Cape Brown when I went back in the mariners and toothies. So that's why I would have had enough shells to have made that very long toothy shell necklace that you've got in the collection. So it, it's probably a one and only um, that I made, that white, white one, and, and one and only in Australia, and one and only in the world probably that, you know, because that's what's happening. The shells are becoming scarcer. I mean, there's becoming, we've got more makers as well. Pr probably not making, I mean, I make especially for exhibitions or 
you know, and then they go into collections, which I love, and, and that's something that then my grandchildren can go and look and find out where my necklaces are and have a look at them. Um, so I think that's really important. I guess um, making shell necklaces um, to me is really emphasising the significance of um, Aboriginal cultural women's practice in Tasmania. I just think it's so important that we carry on this practice um, and hand it on to our next generations. And I mean, I've handed it on to two now. I think as part of this, you know, telling your story about making um, shell necklaces and, and, and it's the strength in their story. I mean, we have a history behind our shell necklace making and it goes back generations. Um, and uh, it keeps us grounded. It's part of that grounding process. So, so to go back to the beach and collect the shells, you then thinking about the stories of the earlier women and, and how we exchange stories with older women like my mother-in-law, Dulcie. And, um, but to go back to the island is, is very therapeutical, collecting the shells and making the necklaces. Um, but it's also that um, reinvigorating, I suppose, our, our cultural spirits in a sense, going back to the island because I, and I often sit there and think, you know, it's very quiet today and the water's calm and it's sunny and beautiful and you want to just wander along the beach when the tide's out at your heart's content. But you think, I wish I could have all the people here before me again to, to retell the story. So I think that's Again, what it's about is them, the influence it has spiritually and um, culturally. It's, it's very powerful, I think, for us. Mm. So I guess as, um, you know, as an Aboriginal woman, this practice is about passing down our stories and passing down that practice. It's, it's part of Aboriginal people's way of, of handing on their stories and handing on their practice. But you have to take your family with you, with it. You don't just do it alone, you know, because that's not all of the story. You can't, you can't do it by yourself. Um, and, and even today, Rex and I go to the beach, but we, take, we still take his mum with us as much as we can. She's, she's getting much older now. She's our elder and we have to take care of her. But it but it's bringing her along with us and, you know, taking her to my exhibition opening with the, the other night. It wouldn't have been quite right even going there without her in a sense, you know, because the, the, it is all about the family. You, know, you, couldn't, you couldn't do this or tell your story without your family in a sense. So, yeah, very significant.